Number 12 is absolutely nasty. We have that Ellis designs a gift box. The top of the gift box is in the shape of the right angle triangle, G, I, K. A rectangular section, H, I, J, L, which is this guy here, is inscribed inside the triangle. The lengths of G, H, J, K, H, L, and A, L, J are P, Q, 8, and 6, respectively. See, this is all stuff that the diagram already has. We read it, make sure that it's there anyways, because you never know. And now we begin. See? The area of the top of the gift box is A centimeter squared. So we need to find A in terms of P and Q. So careful. For a lot of people, top of the gift box, they're going to look at the diagram and be like, ah, so it's this guy here. So it's top of the gift box. Read carefully, bro. They tell us that the top of the gift box is in the shape of the right angle triangle GIK. So this whole guy is the top of the gift box. See? Read carefully. You never know. Anyways. Um, so for part A, part I, we are talking about a right angle triangle, see? And so this is a little bit hard to visualize, but as a right angle triangle, this actually looks like this. I'm going to make it stand up straight. Um, K is going to be my height. I is going to be here. And G is going to be there. See? This is 90 degrees. Yeah, that's about it. Oh, well, and if I'm going to get super technical, this is H. This is J. This is L. So, and we're going to put these values here as well. J, L is 6. This guy is 8. And that is all we know. See? Oh. We also know, sorry, that this guy is P and that JK is Q. See? Cool. All right, so we need to find the area of this whole guy here. Now, um, there's a lot of different ways to approach this. The one that's easy, easiest for me is to notice that, A, this rectangle here, ¿cierto? is, well, I mean, the shape here <laughs> is a rectangle, the one in orange. So that means that that 6 up there means that this guy down here is a 6. And that 8 over there means that this guy over here is also an 8. ¿cierto? And so suddenly I can now use the classic base times height divided by 2. Base times height divided by 2. So finding A in terms of P and Q, we can say base, which is 6 plus P, times height, which is Q plus 8 divided by two that is one way to do it there's a dude there's like a million see but i'm gonna do it like this for now and next we need to show that a is that now what is special about this notice that we have 192 divided by q plus 3q plus 48 there is no p there is no p so you need to find a way to say um p equals something q ¿cierto? and plug in q ¿vale? So that is our current goal. We need to find ways to link both equations, ¿cierto? All right. So what are ways in which we can end up with, like, a way to relate P and Q? See, that is our biggest challenge right now. We need to find a way to relate P and Q. Again, there are a lot of approaches, and so this is one of those problems that you really have to stare at and, like, think about for a while. But just to be efficient, ¿cierto? Notice that this angle here, is the same as that angle there. See? Why are they the same? Because of this following property that looks like this. In parallel lines, if you have something cutting through it, this guy is the same as this guy. See? Just to help you remember, this guy is also the same as this guy. See? That is a property I'm talking about. But I'm talking about this angle there and this angle there. See? Which are the same ones that I drew in orange earlier. And so, this data and this data are quite literally the same. So let's do a little bit of trigonometry. I'm sure you've heard of Sokatoa for sine, uh, cosine, and tangent. F um, for tangent, we have Toa, which is T-O-A. That means opposite over adjacent. ¿cierto? And so let's see what happens if I do the Toa of this theta. ¿cierto? So we have tan, theta. Let's go with the one on top first, ¿cierto? Opposite is Q, 
divided by adjacent is 6. Let's do the theta of the other guy. Opposite is 8. Adjacent is P. All right, so I can take these two bad boys, cierto, and sort of equal them to each other. So I have Q over 6 equals 8 over P. Okay. Now, um, so we're doing this in order to get P equals something and get rid of all my P's. Okay, and turn them into Q's and end up with an A that only has Q's. Okay. All right, so in this stage, we cross multiply. We have 8 times 6 equals P times Q. See, 8 times 6 is 48. 48 equals P times Q. So this is one thing that can help us. We need to get uh, P equals something. So P equals 48 divided by Q. So these are two things that can help us. See? All right. Awesome. 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 So we need to use this to plug in over here. Cierto? And through that, we're going to end up with this guy there. I know that we're going to end up with this guy there because I'm going to have only Qs. See, that is the goal right now. End up with only Qs. So let's develop what I have written over here first. Um, I'm going to distribute over there. Cierto? And have... 6 times q, 6q, right? Plus 6 times 8, we said was 48. Plus p times q, pq. Plus p times 8, 8p. See? All of this being divided by 2. See? Now, just because it's easier to like sort of visualize, I'm going to draw it out to divide it by 2. It's affecting each term individually, so it actually looks like that. I think this is just much easier to grasp, ¿cierto? So p divided by 2. I'm not going to plug in yet. I'm going to do I'm going to let the 2 do what it does, ¿cierto? And now I'm going to plug in, ¿sí? So, we said that p was 48 divided by q, ¿cierto? All right, so now we're going to plug in. We end up with area being equal to 3q. This remains unchanged. 24 remains remains unchanged. We said that PQ was 48, so 48 divided by 2. And we have 4 times P. We said that P was 48 divided by Q. So that's going to be a weird one. ¿cierto? All right, A. A equals 3Q, still unchanged, plus 24, still unchanged. 48 divided by 2 is 24. And that weird one in the end is 4 times 48, which will give me 192 divided by Q. See? So A equals... 192 divided by Q plus 3Q plus 48. See, if I organize my terms a little bit, I end up with that, which is the same that what, what we're trying to show. See, now I know that this part got a little bit messy, but again, your compass never lose sight of what you're trying to get. Cierto? So if these are only Qs, find a way to get P equals something. P equals something in terms of Q. So that you can plug in and end up with just Q. See? Now we need to find dA over dQ. What's that? What that is telling you is that you take the the formula with your A, cierto, which is this guy here, and you do the derivative in respects to Q. Now, of course, you want to do it with whatever has only Q, cierto, which is the one down here. And so, um, let me use another color. dA over dQ. See? It's going to get a little bit tricky when Q is on the bottom, ¿cierto? And so before I do the derivative, if you have a variable on the bottom, you want to put it on top first. See, it's just going to be easier in your life. Trust me. 192 times Q to the power of negative 1 plus 3Q plus 48. So all I did here was bring the Q up top. See? Negative exponents work like that. See, so let me take a moment to explain that. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. See? So you can see that here I'm doing times 2. ¿cierto? Each time. If I want to go backwards, I actually divide by 2. So 16 divided by 2 gives me 8. 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. So on and so on. So if I keep going, divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 4 divided by... Sorry, 2 divided by 2 is going to be 1. That's also why anything to the power of 0 is 1. And if I keep going, 2 to the power of negative 1 is 1 half, ¿cierto? 2 to the power of negative 2 
is uh, 1 over 4 t. And the step in between, ¿cierto? Of 2 to the power of negative 2 is that I actually do 1 over 2 to the power of 2 equals 1 over 4 t. So that is what the negative exponent does. That's all the explanation was for. Um, so I can, I can rewrite my original equation to this. Makes it much, much easier to do the derivative. So uh, derivative of a exponent, it goes down in front, ¿cierto? So negative 1. And you do minus 1 to the exponent. So negative 1, minus 1, negative 2, ¿sí? Where this 3q, there's a hidden 1 for the exponent, ¿cierto? So it's going to be 3 times 1, ¿cierto? So it's just 1 times 3, nothing really changes. Times q to the power of 0, ¿sí? Now q to the power of 0 is just 1, right? And 1 times 3 is just going to be 1. It's just, sorry, 1 times 3 is just going to be 3. So this second term actually stays like that. For the last one, we have plus 48. It's a constant, so it stays like that. See? Anyways, that is the answer for um, for part B. See? If you want to leave it like super fancy, it would be like this. You put one negative 192, you put the Q back on the bottom, and you do plus 3 over there. See? That is for part B. Uh, moving on, we have that Ellis. Ellis wishes to find the value of Q that will minimize the area of the top of the gift box. Write down an equation Ellis could solve to find this value of Q, and hence or otherwise find this value of Q here. See? So, optimization. See? For optimization, it is a whole lot easier than what you think. See? So, for optimization, what you want to do is take your derivative, take your derivative, and equal that bad boy to zero. This will always work. See, it's just it's just how optimization works. You take the derivative, you give it to zero. Bada bim, bada boom. I have explanations on why this works in some of my other videos. The quick recap is that since we're dealing with a quadratic, cierto, which is something like this, and a derivative is your rate of change, cierto. If you have a rate of ch this rate of change here is like negative four. See, this rate rate of change over here is a uh, whatever negative three, cierto. This rate of change there at the vertex is zero, ¿cierto? And so at zero, you will always have your vertex in a quadratic with your der derivative, ¿see? If you were to have a maximum, this guy here would have its derivative of zero. This guy here would have a derivative of like two, ¿see? So that's why you're equal to zero. You are always, always going to find the vertex there. And well, that's how you optimize, ¿cierto? Min or max is always at the vertex. So. Um, take your derivative and equal to zero. So C part I, actually, the thing that asks you for the equation is going to be negative 182 divided by Q squared plus 3 equals zero. Literally, that is C part I. C part double I is, of course, solving this. See? So we're going to put uh, 192 divided by Q squared to the other side. 3 equals 192 divided by Q squared. Multiply both sides by q squared. 3q squared equals 192. Divide by 3 to both sides first. So q squared equals however much that is. Um, let's check. 192 divided by 3. 64. See? Square root of 64. How much is this? q is going to be 8. Don't forget the units. Centimeters. See? Square root of 64, you can check here, is going to be 8. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. So, big idea here. When you optimize, you equal to 0. See? That is for number 12. 